Hello, hi everyone. Thanks for joining us today at the LATAM Startups Conference, a roundtable conversation on international startups. Today we'll be having a conversation with Alan Ozel, with Mark Steffler, with Andrew Buckus, and myself, Blaine Kumar, who'll be moderating today's conversation. The world is currently having a major health crisis like never before, but yet, startups are still looking to expand and grow their businesses. What type of startups do you think should be opening businesses in Canada right now, especially with the circumstances with COVID-19? Uh, excellent question. The uh, information technology scene is actually thriving in Canada. In fact, the uh, Toronto Stock Exchange Information Technology Index is up over 40% in 2020, which just goes to show that the, uh, the market is very much growing. Specifically in Burlington, I'm seeing a lot of opportunities around advanced manufacturing, specifically robotics and process engineering, additive and composite manufacturing. There's opportunities around clean technology, specifically around water and wastewater technology. In the ICT space, there's a lot of technologies related to COVID-19, uh, smart technology, sensors, software, property technology, things in that area. And then there's a lot of opportunities in the biomedical and life sciences associated with COVID-19 as well. Yeah, in our practice, we found that there's been a real uptick in like health tech platforms, um, telehealth, e-commerce has, has seen a, a massive boom. Basically, any business that was selling products uh, in, in retail had to find a way to sell it online. So a huge uptick in, in, in e-commerce as well. We're seeing um, companies that deal with workforce management, um, organization of tasks, uh, just to, to help them coordinate their, their remote working style. Um, and, uh, and yeah, that's pretty much it. I think those are, the, those are the, the types of companies that we've seen as a result of the pandemic that have come through. What does Canada have to offer international startups? I think right now uh, the world is pretty unstable in, in a, lot of, a lot of countries. Um, politically and then with COVID layered on top, of that, on top of that. So for the Canadian environment, I mean, we have incredible tech talent very easily accessible, affordable. Uh, it won't run you the salaries that it would in, in other spaces, like uh, in San Francisco, for example. Um, and we work really closely with our universities to make sure that tech talent is subsidized so if people are looking to hire recent graduates, for example, for any of, for many of our post-secondary institutions, they can get, you know, five fifteen thousand $15,000 to offset a lot of those costs. Um, for a lot of founders too, I think, Canada's offer for permanent residency really resonates with people. We're treating them as future citizens, not simply as just, you know, someone to come in and, and set up a business and then we, we ask them to leave or something, right? Like, I think the, the Canadian welcome is a lot more human than other countries are, are offering at this time. And if I do add COVID onto it, I mean, we're, we're relatively stable compared to cities around the world. So if you're scaling up a company, why wouldn't you want to do it in, in a country that's seen an 88% recovery rate? What do you think are the major mistakes international startups make when starting businesses in Canada? Well, they get very excited about obtaining some kind of, um, you know, immigration status, but then sometimes they don't do the research that they need to do. They don't understand the market. They don't understand if their product or services are actually close to the community that they're targeting. So it is very important that they do the research, that they connect with the right people like LATAM, that they guide them through all the kind of mystic waters and also um, different people like lawyers, um, digital marketing people, if, if it's possible. Um, Everybody that you have currently at your own home, you have to have it in here as well because it is an equal of your business internationally. Sometimes you have to twitch it because there are other things that are important in Canada compared to other countries, but it's similar to the plan that you have already in place. Yeah, I think what we've seen is that um, international companies who have had a, a decent amount of exposure and traction in their home countries uh, sometimes they assume that they have to keep the business as is. They have to keep what they were doing, what they were working in their home country, what was working in their home country. Um, but what we've seen is that uh, sometimes the, the cultural shift, the language barrier shift, um, the difference in, in the way we do business in Canada requires like almost like a, a, a Canadianizing 
uh, of, of the, the business. So we find that, that international companies need to do their research up front about the differences between the cultures from where they're from and, and, and when they're coming to Canada, and they have to be willing to be adaptable. Uh, just because something was working in your home country and just because you were presenting an offering uh, in your home country in a particular way, it doesn't mean it's going to work in Canada here. Uh, you have to be adaptable and, and do what it takes to, to adapt to the Canadian market. I, I actually think a lot of startups I've worked with uh, and international companies looking to expand have actually, in my opinion, they've waited too long to determine the market fit and pursue customers. So, of course, businesses want to go through a market validation process to determine whether or not their product is of interest to the target market. But, uh, you know, if their market, if they're validating the market, they're reaching out to the customers, they're doing customer interviews, these should all be viewed as potential customers and potential salespeople to uh, sell the product to. So, you know, right away, they should look for contacts. They should work to establish your network, work to validate the market. And uh, if there's demand, keep moving forward. If there's not, they could pivot. In my opinion, um, most businesses should try to have their first customers, possibly on a trial or pilot basis, but within six months of arriving to Canada, because that would really be some good uh, indication that the Canadian market is accepting of the product and that they're able to exceed and uh, grow their business as, uh, as most of these startups and entrepreneurs would intend to do in Canada. How can your organization help an international business establish themselves in Canada? So we, uh, we have our expertise in the market. We understand about the digital mediums and the uh, social platforms and how the diverse Canada and United States works. Uh, sometimes when we come to Canada, yes, we want to connect with the English speakers, but we don't realize that Canada and the United States are very heavy on multicultural backgrounds. So, it would be nice and ideal to implement uh, an international package in a way, or at least an ethnic line. If you have Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, you may want to log into WeChat. I know there's a lot of problematics with WeChat right now and TikTok, but there are platforms that are thriving and they have an enormous amount of uh, uh, subscribers. So this is what we bring to the clients. We, we try to bring them to a place that is very uh, alien to them, as many of the, uh, if you pay attention, as the majority of the budget is spent in North America, and in Latin America, the budget is 5% according to the total spending. So we need to educate new companies to uh, how invest their money efficiently with that. Well, I, mean, we're, I operate a business and technology law firm, and uh, through our firm, we've worked with a number of international startups. And basically the way that we help uh, these startups is if they know their, their reason, their intent for coming to Canada, uh, then we make decisions as to how to incorporate a new company for them in Canada as a starting point, and then eventually work with them to work through their contracts uh, and whatever other legal requirements they have. Uh, the, the main kind of determining factor for us is, is the international startup coming to Canada to expand an existing business um, and not necessarily for immigration purposes or are they coming because the founders want to move to Canada for, you know, truly to, to, to uh, create a life in Canada for immigration purposes. Um, if we know the answer to that question, it helps us determine what's the structure of the corporation that we would set up and whether or not there's a requirement to have a particular structure for an immigration purpose. Uh, that's usually a, a helpful starting point for us. And there's other factors that we have to look at, like if, is there going to be a Canadian director that they're going to have on board in order to meet what we call a, a Canadian residency requirement that would allow them to create their company in Ontario um, or under the federal legislation, or whether we have to get creative and incorporate a company in a province that does not have uh, a residency requirement, a director residency requirement. So what we do is we ask the right questions, um, we, we speak with the founders to understand their motivations, uh, understand their, their reasons for coming to Canada, um, and, then, and then try to find creative solutions to help them start their business here. What would be the best advice you could give an international startup looking to do business in North America? As I mentioned earlier, I think the startups coming in, they really need to be cognizant of how important academic institutions are to the scale up plan of startups. Um, and whether or not that's, that's accessing the tech talent or segmenting off a component of their scale up as an R&D project, uh, or simply just networking, networking in that space, 
Canada in particular, Ontario in particular, is really set up to facilitate that, that collaboration between academia and startups. Uh, and we have entire cities that are built around that, like a Waterloo, for example. And I don't know where um, the startups may be coming from, but the ones I've met, the ones I've engaged, the international ones especially, that's actually a new, a new way to scale their company. And it's, it's a novel way compared to how they would have done it back home. So I would strongly encourage them to consider um, a segmentation that could go into R&D or a collaboration with an academic institution as a scale-up uh, plan. In addition to Andrew's uh, excellent answer on uh, post-secondary institutions, I actually think the, the market in, Canada, in Canada is very different than in some other markets. There's a lot more government support organizations. There's a lot more innovation ecosystem partners, if you will. So at Tech Place in Burlington, we actually bring together about 60 different organizations and that provide support and help uh, companies to expand internationally. They help companies to innovate, scale up, grow, et cetera. So again, working with a group like Tech Place, working with a group like LADM Startups, you're really just getting to know the Canadian landscape, having your foot feet in first, uh, kind of immersing yourself in a pre-existing network and uh, having help opening some of those doors and learning some, from some of the people that have been there as opposed to doing it all yourself would be a huge value add. And kind of in addition to the other answer that I previously responded, my second point would be start prospecting for sales from day one. If you're here to make sales, you're here to develop a product, uh, get out there, get knocking on doors, get making sales and uh, again, really look for the market opportunities as much as possible uh, right when you get to Canada. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll just add for for the, on that, Blaine, I think all the answers were, were fantastic. I think the other, the other point is that um, market research, uh, as Vanessa mentioned, is extremely important. It's also very important to listen to who your potential customers are. Obtain feedback. Obtain feedback, iterate, adapt. Um, you know, that's the way that startups succeed. Uh, you're not going to know exactly what the product market fit is necessarily right when you come to Canada. Uh, but that's why you you put a version of what you're trying to offer out there. Get feedback on on how you're presenting that offering, uh, on what changes need to be made to that offering, uh, and then iterate and, and and offer what you're being told to offer. And I think that helps get you to the point where where you know you've you've now Canadianized your product and you've adapted to the new market. And uh, another point that I would like to add to these beautiful ideas is to use the resources that you already have. Sometimes when we come from Latin America or India or other places, we don't use LinkedIn. And some people think that coming to Canada or the United States, you have to create a new page in order for you to present, represent yourself. But you don't understand that actually in Canada, in the United States, we value the time that you have spent on becoming who you are. So instead of creating a new page on LinkedIn, bring that messaging saying that you are transforming, that you're changing, that you're bringing new innovations. So use the sources that you already have to bring new clients, to link to the sources that you have in Canada and the United States. That's a, uh, I think is a great idea for, for you guys to use. I'd like to thank all the panelists for joining us today and for answering our questions. You've been a great help.